Hello, folks, and welcome to another swell edition of the Bill Crane Report with my co-conspirator and good friend, Dwayne Weiss. We're here to uh, give you our spin on things that are happening. And I'm going to start off with something that I really am ripped about, Dwayne. You ripped about something? Yep. <clears throat> so we have Barron's. A very nice financial mm -hmm. weekly newspaper. And look at the headlines. A hundred most influ influential women in the U.S. finance. I could name one of them. Wall Street Journal. Look at this picture. World marks International Women's Day. When the hell are we going to have International Men's Day? You won't. We won't is you won't. right. And I'm getting sick and tired. I know. Of this. You know what they say when it's a, that, that question is posed. They say you have it all every day, all year long. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, sir, there you are. Well, thank you for your listening and dancing pleasure. Um. Do you ever wonder how some of this stuff ever starts? Like yeah. International Women's Day. Yeah. Who did, who was the, who's behind that? Where did that come from? Where did they're troublemakers that start this stuff? Another thing that you see it, you'll see it in the Globe now. Watch the letters to the editor. If there's six of them, four of them will be some organization, uh, Central Committee for Dogs Rights or some damn thing, Executive Director. Who are these people? How do they get paid? And what do they do? But they're always in the paper. They're overpaid. Exactly what they do, I don't know, probably screw off all day. And who are they? Nutbags. And there's thousands of them. Well, now you say that. In the Herald, uh, um, the, the editorial page is somewhat of a laugh. Uh, but. There are three or four write-ins every day. From, yeah. And there's a guy by the name of Paul Blostein, I believe. And the other names escape me. Every fourth or fifth day, he has a letter. From Cincinnati, Ohio. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And, and from, so he just sits there and he bangs out letters to all the papers, the papers. that will print them. You'll find one in the Globe from uh, some place in Florida, Tampa or something. He yeah. shows up like that. And then, of course, you know, you... You read the editor or the letters in uh, Sun Chronicle, right? It's always that same group, and you only got to look down to see who wrote it. You know what's in there, because they reiterate over and over the same same idea. The same guy from Foxborough that editorializes too. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, th those are people that have a lot of time on their hands. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, not like you and I. Yeah, there's one I won't tell you on the air, but he's a former minister. He got defrocked a few years ago. huh? And he's, he's got, he's very opinionated. Upset, is he? Oh, he's upset about everything. Oh, God. We ought to get him on the show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I... Have I don't know how the hell I got these things in here, but they shouldn't be. All right, so I have. Uh, I just don't even know where to start here, Dwayne. But pick uh, one and just jump in it. All right. Um, I I I like to start with, and here it is. Well, here's your choices. Okay. Give up chocolate or give up peanut butter? Peanut butter. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I have peanut butter on everything. Well, I like I, peanut butter too. But yeah, I, I put it on my carrots even. Oh, uh, carrots. That's for rabbits. <laughs> give up music or give up reading? Oh, music. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm well, not, I like music, but I don't. I don't know music. I know I hear music in the background. Yeah, I, I can't tell you who's, who who do does it. Yeah, but like um, for Christmas, 
I got a, uh, what the hell you even call it? It's like a, a wireless speaker thing. Yep. And it goes online, Spotify, and you pick out oh, on okay. your phone the music you want, and you just press the button, and it starts to play. I've only used it twice. You, know, you don't want to wear it out. I just don't have any occasion to do it. I like music, too. Um, I know what I like. It's what sounds good, too. Mm -hmm. Uh, I like the old big band stuff from the 30s, 40s, uh, country and western, and some classical stuff. Yep. And that's, you know. Um, You're not a rap fan? No way. <laughs> that, that's just noise. That is. That, that's, that's for the untalented. Lose all your money or lose all your hair? Oh, my hair can go. I don't care. There are some people, in fact, there was a guy on uh, Fox Financial the other morning. Uh, he's the former president of the Atlanta Fed uh, okay. sector. Mm -hmm. And I said to Susie, I said, get in here quick, look at this. Is that the worst wig you've ever seen in your life? Oh, some and of them guys got the most hideous things. I, I, Dwayne, if, honest to God, if I had a muskrat and glued it to his head, <laughs> yeah. it would have looked better. Tail friend, on the friend of ours had the yeah. same thing. Yeah. I mean, it was awful. And he, there he is talking about finances. Uh, Next yeah, time you yeah, see yeah. our, uh, what the hell is he called? Secretary of State? Galvin. Oh, yeah. Pay a close attention to his hair. Oh, was he uh, He's got run too? I suspect there's a, a a muskrat sitting on that head too, because <laughs> it comes down here. It doesn't and where it comes, it don't match the it doesn't even match the color of the other half part of the hair. This guy had gray hair and then this huge sideways block <laughs> of black hair stick. Oh god. Ay ay ay. Have fruit punch or soda. Mm, fruit punch, probably. Really? I had to go for the soda. Yeah, and there's, there's a reason for that, though. That's a, I got a hiatal hernia. Oh, well. <laughs> and that hurts. sometimes a soda hurts. Yeah. Have fruit, uh, yeah. Eat fried or baked chicken? Oh, uh, no comparison. I'd eat fried chicken five days a week. Yep. Absolutely. You can't get good fried chicken that I found around here yet. It's hard to find decent to fried chicken. A little bit. Oh, for a while, I found none. Then uh, uh, Cracker Barrel's pretty decent. They got a southern fried chicken finally on their menu. Um, but I, I cruise when I drive around. I said, "Oh, please be a Popeye going in there." <laughs> we don't even have a decent KFC. No, no, mm -mm. no. Um, yeah, fried chicken. Uh, sleep with an overstuffed pillow or a flat pillow? Overstuffed. Okay. Yeah, I don't go for the flat pillows either. Never wash the dishes again or never clean the toilet again? Yeah, I probably never clean the toilet again. They don't bother me, but I, I don't like doing either one of them. Agreed. Have an all-expense-paid dream vacation or $50,000 to do whatever you want with. Oh, 50 grand. Right, I know where it's going to go, too. Oh. Huh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you might, might end up playing Roger Foxborough. Uh, no, <laughs> see, if, if you hand me some money like that, that, that you got to spend it or take the vacation, That's it's... Lexus. Pl Plainville, here I come. No, it's Lexus, here I come. <laughs> live without hot water or live without air conditioning? Oh, I can deal without air conditioning. Yeah, me too. I don't... Uh, I don't care for it. I got uh, two window units that haven't been in in two or three years, yeah. four years. I didn't yeah. have them, just been bothered putting them in. Mm -hmm. I um, have a couple of them, too, and I don't put them in. No. Uh, Susie puts one, uh, Patrick puts it in for Susie, 
uh, in her upstairs sewing room. That's it. Yep. You know what we do? Is at night, we open all the windows. All the windows. And get cross current. Yeah, and let yeah. the house cool down. There you go. Get up in the morning and shut, shut the windows up. Shut the windows. Up, and they stay, stay nice all day long. That's what the old Yankees did. Yeah. Yeah, and it, you don't yeah, it find those things. That's common sense that comes yep. later in life, it seems. Uh, know when you're going to die or know how you will die. That's an interesting, my God, that's a, that's a, that is, that's something right out of some philosophy class that, yeah, um, know when or how, you know, I'm almost willing to say when. Me too. Because I'm the last one standing, I'm going to have a good time. <laughs> well, you know, I've often thought um, that, <clears throat> If I knew when I was going to die, supposing, God forbid, but supposing I am diagnosed with cancer and yeah. I've given three yeah. months to yeah, live, right. there are people I would like to go spend some time oh, with. Oh, yeah, exactly. And thank them for being mm -hmm. part of my life yep. and tell them how much I appreciate yep. them. You don't get and that if only I did this or if only I did that. Yep. That's right. I think that's 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 pro that's probably. And otherwise, if you know how you're going to die, you'd spend the rest of your life avoiding that. That's right. Or trying to. Well, as one uh, person, are, are we talking about this over a few beers? And and uh, he says you're crazy. He said, I want to die in my sleep. I don't want to know what's ha even going to happen. It uh, all happened. Well, I, I don't, I wouldn't object to dying in my sleep. Yeah. But I want to know, again, yeah. this is my last day or my last two days or something. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to just go to bed and say, well, and then not wake up. It's all over. Yeah. yeah. Wake up and find you dead. Yeah, yeah. wake <laughs> up and find you dead. <laughs> Be alone and happy, or married and miserable. Oh my God! You gotta be alone and happy, because <laughs> you don't have to be it stay doesn't. alone. You know. That's it's right. Uh, yeah. Eat rattlesnakes or alligators. Oh, I. I would wouldn't have a total aversion probably to either one of them. Um, the only problem is I. Suspect that I've heard that alligator has kind of a fishy taste. Uh, it might be not, might not be true, and I don't like anything with a fishy taste. But I, I wouldn't. If is this something I could order on a menu, or am I out in the woods and it's yeah, either this or die? You know, I, I, I don't know. I, I do know that Peter for school when he was in Tri County um, had to cook something. Out of the ordinary. Okay. And he got some alligator meat and brought it home and cooked it. And I had a bite of it and it was, was it? spiced up. So you yeah. didn't even know what the hell you were chewing. I, I, except it was very chewy. Yeah, that I think it's all muscle. Yeah. But I don't I don't have a problem most most of that stuff, but I I don't look for it because I said, they still got cows, they still got chickens, yeah. they still got pigs. Why the hell would I want to go looking for rattlesnake exactly. meat? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Um, swim fast or run fast? Oh, I use slim fast. I like slim fast. Yep. And I can't run for crap. Give up potato chips or french fries? Oh, you had to get to the hard one there, <laughs> Jeff. Mm. Probably would be french fries, although I like them, but I don't have them that often. Only when you probably eat out yeah. someplace. Or once in a while we'll buy the, the frozen ones. But potato chips, I'll have a lot of time sandwich with chips and stuff. Yeah, I like, I like potato chips. I do too. Yeah, it, unfortunately it's a very easy thing to pig out on. Oh my God. While you're watching the ball game or something. And I, of course, you know, you rationalize too. Oh yeah. That, that uh, I think it's Lay's got a low salt. Yeah. <laughs> They're act, oh, they're delicious, but hell, there's no salt in them, so you might as well yeah, go for it. Hell? Eat the whole bag. Yeah, bag and all. Yeah. Give up hamburgers 
or hot dogs? Another one that's tough. Hot dogs, they're both of my, particular hot dogs in my top five foods. Mm. Uh, I probably have to give up ham or hot dogs because I be salt in them again. Yeah, uh, no, I'm going to give up hamburgers. Okay. Be a figure skater or a gymnast? Be one? Yeah. Well, I know damn well I'm never going to be either one. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say, this is the first one that I'm going to answer neither. Yeah, because I, I can skate, but I don't figure skate. I got no, no interest in that. And gymnasts, I, I think they're, they're not human. It, you're right. Yeah. You're not supposed to bend that way. No, mm -hmm. you're not. You're not supposed to be have able that to kind do of balance those things. Yeah. yeah. And not only that, while you're doing that eight times around twirl, if you land on your head, you're dead. Yeah. I, 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 that would that's an appeal. Who the hell can me. walk on a beam like that and jump around and do cartwheels and stuff on it? Me. It's just, uh, uh, it's just bad. Well, all right, Dwayne, I think it's time now to get serious. That you wasn't know, serious? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, I found something I wanted to lead in with you. All right. Uh, we are witnessing a human tragedy of unthinkable proportion in Haiti. Oh, in Haiti, yeah. Gangs That's now control 80%. Boy, that's, uh, some, that's really something when you see them. Yeah, Port uh, of Prince. Gangs yeah. taking, over, exactly taking yeah. over a country. That, that's taking amazing. Taking over everything. Yeah. Uh, the nation is out of control. They're slaughtering people, the gangs, in terrorizing neighborhoods. The Biden administration, for all purposes, uh, for all intents and purposes, are doing nothing. Biden is like a deer in the headlights of your car, standing yet blinded, frozen in place, unable to move. This is not hyperbole, by the way, folks. This is what's happening. It's seemingly beyond his comprehension. Think of this. He's our leader. He can't bring himself to talk to us about Haiti. He doesn't talk about the Ukraine, Israeli Hamas problem, our own border crisis, street crime. His public utterances are limited to ice cream flavors and his bizarre spin on Bidenomics. Um, do you remember presidents of bygone years? Yeah. They would uh, uh, announce uh, at 8 o'clock tonight, uh, President Bush will speak for 10 <laughs> minutes right, about, exactly. the, about the situation <laughs> on the border with Mexico. Yeah, or the, or and he'd come on yeah. and say, fellow Americans, here's what's happening. Here's what I have ordered the army to do. God bless America. Pray for our troops. Mm. And that's it. But he would, they would confide in us. They would tell us their thought process. They would talk about yeah. what is happening and try to rationalize it and explain what they're doing about it. Things have changed. There's no question about it. Yeah. And this is the I'm Biden influence. I'm not sure influence. where it's coming from, though. I think it's a Biden influence. I really and truly. Well, that and the fact that Joe has, I think, gone around the bend. Yeah, also. well. I that think there's two things here. Yeah. Um, I, I see. I, I don't. He, he has something to do with it, but he doesn't know all of it. Too. The presidents are actually quite weak when it comes to stuff like this. There's other people controlling oh, yeah. those kind of things, but he does not exert a lot of leadership in some of that things. And we haven't had a leadership like that since Bush's. You know, I'm going to make a radical statement. So uh, if you get your seatbelt on there. I got it. You're all tucked in here, all tightened down. One of my favorite presidents, George W. Bush. Yeah. I, both the Bushes. I, yep. Uh, I really liked W. I'll tell you how influential the Bushes were. 
Well, of course, they were Texans, but that we, I got a lot of relatives in Texas. And both, all of them say that there are two, two Republican parties right now in Texas. They're called MAGAs or Bush Republicans. And they completely have, they have separated. And so and I, 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 said, I thought about it when he said that. I said, you know, that kind of makes sense. It does. Yeah. That's the biggest problem the Republican Party has. Yeah. Is that uh, uh, Trump is not a Republican. He is a populist. Yeah. And uh, it's not the party. It's him. That's right. Uh, it's not what the party stands for. It's what he stands yep. for. We'll see how all that works out. He's very it's popular going, right now. It's going to be interesting. Yeah, it sure is. But, Dwayne, you and I have talked about Haiti before. And, and yeah, kind uh, of... Go back to Haiti. That's a good idea. Um, the thing with Haiti is that it's on our doorstep. Yeah. Not literally, but it's it is. It's it's not yeah. Ukraine. It's not China. It's not uh, well, Taiwan. If you were a good swimmer, you could take a yeah. whack at swimming from uh, Haiti to uh, Florida. Yeah, because I know when you go to Aruba, you fly all over these yeah. Jamaica and, and Dominican Republic and Haiti, and you go, oh, geez. Oh, I, yeah, there's one, and there's the other. You can see them from the air already. That, that old joke about Jamaica is always great. What's that? Jamaica. I didn't even get oh, yeah. to kiss her. <laughs> Jamaica. <laughs> but like Kennedy did in Cuba, he didn't want them damn missiles on our doorstep. And he did something about it. Yeah. Now, it was ballsy. And it didn't work. Because they made a mess of it. Well, of course they did, but it, they got the missiles out. But we had, yeah. to, we had a lot of concessions. But even now... I don't hear anybody in, or we don't know what's going on really, but we don't hear Haitians, the Haitian movers and shakers, saying, please help us. Please, Mr. Biden, please. Because come the in. government has totally crumbled. It has. And it's madmen in the street with mm -hmm. guns that are killing people. By the way, there was a report this morning that they broke into an orphanage to steal food. The gunmen. They, they, the, they, they get people, into hospitals and they, they steal equipment. They're taking, they smash it. You know what, Dwayne? Uh, in all honesty, Haiti is not a third world country. They're about a tenth world country. They're about as backward as you well, can they be. They are one of the worst countries in the world. They are. Countries. And they're also, they're not educated. They live in abject poverty. Mm -hmm. uh, they have no tradition of a democratic government. Yeah. Heck, they, they don't even vote. Uh, well, they have elections, but... Uh, but the problem is, these people, and you, you look, we have to say it, they're backward. Uh, how the devil do we expect them to find their way out of what's going on in Haiti? You know? No, and they we, can't. We can't. They can't do it. I mean, so we in 1932... Uh, were moved to send troops into Haiti. The U.S. Marines went in. And the same sort of stuff was going on. Yep. So Civil disorder and everything, and we went in. Uh, straightened it right out and pulled out probably too soon. Well, as soon as you left, yeah. went right back to where it was. So... There are people in Haiti that still pray every night for the U.S. Marines to come back. Oh, yeah. And you know what, Dwayne? In looking at a situation like that, the world be damned. It uh, seems to me that if we are our brother's keepers, 
and this problem is on our doorstep. Man, fire up the 1st Marine Division and send them in. Yeah. And, and you I, know what? If the French don't like it or the Russians don't like it, tough. Yeah. I, I don't see anything short of intervention by a... And it, it can't be. It, we, they've tried the UN troops from what, Kenya. Nigeria or Kenya. They, they can't even organize. They them. can't. They can't get anything done. They're just as bad. Yeah. They get in there and they loot and steal themselves. Yeah, and, exactly. No, it's got to be someone mm -hmm. like the U.S. or France or France or, or Great Britain mm -hmm. or Germany that goes in there and will stop the uh, violence. Mm -hmm clamp down on it, and form up a government. And if it means rewriting the Constitution, so like MacArthur did for the Japanese, yep. do it. Do it. And then work with them until they're ready to take care of themselves. Oh, yeah. That, but today we, we're so, oh, we can't defend this person's rights or that rights or this rights or that. Everybody's got rights. <laughs> And I'm not saying say rights are bad, but no. I mean... But it's was, like rules, Dwayne. Rules mm -hmm. are rules are rules until you need to break them. And every once in a while, you got to break the rule. What's that one about? Your rights stop when my fist gets two inches from your nose? That's <laughs> it. <laughs> That's about it. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, certainly... Uh, this administration's not going to do anything about it. No. Uh, so it's, it's just going to fester and get worse. It's a humanitarian, humanitarian crisis, totally. You know, you know what? Uh, some uh, talking head made one of the great points. The gross domestic product. I know where you're going there, I think. Is $10 billion of Haiti. Mm -hmm. We sent Haiti... $13 billion in humanitarian aid. Yep. No one knows where, where the money went. went. No, that's true. We've done that for years and years and years in a lot of places. We could have set the money on fire in our backyard and saved postage. I'm not even sure how Haiti comes up with $10 billion of gross GNP. Yeah. I, I, for the life of me, can't think of anything of Haitian. Now nope. they, they might. I'm sure they have some kind of minerals or something that they're kicking out of there. Hemp, I Hemp think, maybe, is uh, something. But that, it's not. It's nothing. I mean, it's they're impoverished. Yeah. Oh, exactly. Yep. And and, it's, and it wouldn't have to be. You know why? Pick something up today, and it says, "Made in China." Why couldn't it be made in Haiti? Because they don't know how to make it. But they could learn. That's right. Yep. It's, it's like the story about, can you give me a fish? Yeah. No, but I'll teach you how, how to fish. fish. That's right. You can catch your own. Yep. <clears throat> and we need to do that. And if we regard them as our neighbor, and we say to them, look, we're going to put you back on your feet. We're not going to occupy you. We get enough problems yeah. running the U.S. We don't want to occupy you, but we want to stop the slaughter, and we want to put you on your feet and get you moving in the right direction. And I, I have never been a fan of allowing countries to emigrate here for reasons that they don't like there. Right. Because what happens, the people that emigrate here are the shakers and the movers there because they got the ability to come here. That just makes their own country worse. Exactly. You should be fixing your own country and make that a nice country. Yeah. Or a good and country. some of these people down there tried it. Mm -hmm. They did. But, uh, uh, the gangs have taken over, you know. You can't allow that. But if we don't clamp down on crime in this country, Oh, Let me tell you, we're headed in that direction. You you want to believe it? Yep. Um, don't think that that element doesn't take advantage of any kind of any sign of weakness is jumped on immediately by that group. Yep. Yep. 
Um, there was an article. Uh, uh, I'll skip that for a minute. Dwayne, I keep hearing this stuff from President uh, Biden and uh, a couple of others, uh, the talking mm -hmm. heads of that era, that, that bunch. Um, we want the rich to pay their fair share. All right. Dwayne, <laughs> what is the fair share? What, what, so oh. supposing now you're in the Biden administration yep. and Joe comes down to you and says, Dwayne, I got to go do a uh, uh, press conference. So they're going to ask me about my fair share statement. What is my fair share? And so what would you tell the president? Well, I don't, wouldn't have the numbers per se, but um, I, I think that everybody, regardless who you are or how much money you make, should be paying an equal proportion <coughs> in relative to how much it is. Flat tax? Mm -hmm. no, no, yeah, no? maybe maybe flat tax. I no. Call it what you want. Because you're getting the benefits. Just because you got some smart attorneys and smart CPAs over here, to avoid this kind of stuff. Well, we actually have that. I mean, we have a graduated tax rate. Yeah. Okay. So y y if if that money if it's actually gone, see, I take I take a lot of those those damn loopholes out. Oh, you know what? You know what that is, Dwayne? That's one page. Yep. That's what I would reduce the damn yeah, exactly. tax bill to. Yep. That's it. One page. Deduct your house. Your uh, yeah, money so, uh, for so children, uh, so you don't hurt the the guy that barely making it every year, every year, every month. But after that, here's the rate you made this much, you owe this much. Bang. I mean, period. When, when you know, and I sound like something out of the Democratic playbook, but I'll tell you what burns me is to see a billionaire, and with all the deductions, all the tax lawyers he has, he ends up paying seven yeah. percent of his income. That, that's not right. No, because you know, we're smoking down the streets paying 10. Yeah. Yeah. And can you afford that 10? Uh, it's hard to believe uh, that we can't work out. But then again, who's doing the lobbying of Exactly. Congress? Who's got the influence? That's it. Who's making the rules? That's right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, I don't know. Um, yeah, I, I think that everybody should everybody should be kicking in, and regardless, I don't, I don't doesn't matter just how much you make or how much you didn't make. You know, someone said to me uh, while well, I was having this discussion with someone else, and they said, under fifty thousand, no taxes; over fifty thousand, seventeen percent of your income. Everybody. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I just. Yeah, I, I, I would make some different steps yeah. in it, but, but yeah, I think that's true. Yeah, uh, that'd be fair. And that essentially is what we have now. That's what we have now. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of taxes, I got my money back already. I haven't got my. Well, you know what? It's going in my bank account until we get. You bank don't know until the statement. Yeah. Um, yeah. Went to just update you on our block and yeah, no, took ten, 10, 15 minutes and she said, well, you'll have it with, the state will be here in, in five to 10 days and the federal will be about 15. She must have been right because bang, 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 they were they were there. Yeah. And you took it right up to Plain Ridge. Oh no, I, never <laughs> I had a direct deposit. I don't know. <laughs> um, Otherwise it'll take you forever to get it if you don't. If they got to write you a check, forget it. Um, one of the things that President Biden's, well, I shouldn't say that. One of the things the current administration does is they are touting the fact that inflation is no problem any longer. We have got it down to 3%, and yesterday Jay Powell said, uh, look, we're not going to cut rates. It's going to go to two. Then we'll talk about cutting rates. Okay. Well, the 
that sounds good until you take this into consideration. We've had a period of inflation uh, that where goods, services, all that stuff has gone up 21 percent in uh, since Biden was elected president. Uh, yes? No? I don't know. I, I, I just what I've seen is that we, our inflationary rate right now is not exceedingly high. It's not. It's lower than it's been the last two administrations. But it has a psychological value in that one, it's been politicized, and number two, we see the inflation rate where it's the worst, and that's the grocery store. Yeah. People, I just saw the the average person in this country goes to a grocery store two point or three point seven times a week. Stops get this, stops get that, or grows. Or yeah. Whatever. And they they see that so often they know, hey, that thing was eighty nine cents last month, or now it's a dollar twenty nine, or this is good. That's up to six dollars. That's that's in their mind all the time. But the overall is not that bad. But if we get that that food thing down, we'd well, be in fat city. Well, the, and and rental. And rent, that's another thing. That's okay. Gasoline is back up over three bucks. That We have no control whatsoever. That's right. an international cartel that's doing well, that. I was going to go in a different direction. Um, so, the rate is down to 3%. Inflation, yeah, three or 3.7, seven, seven, yeah, like something that. like that. Boy, like go out and sing and dance in the street. There's uh, a guy that's on Fox <coughs> Financial once a week. Mm -hmm. uh, cheap as creepers. I should know his name. I've seen him a hundred yeah. times. Don't try. The harder you try, the, the big, further. The big heavy guy. I know who the cow yep. shirts. Yeah. So <clears throat> he said, well, inflation is a funny thing. He said, now look at me. He said, supposing I, last year, put on 10 pounds a month. That would have been 120 pounds for a year. Must be related to me. <laughs> uh, so he said, so that would be 120 pounds a year. This year, I'm on a diet. And I'm putting on only five pounds mm -hmm. a month. I always go into that. Go ahead. I'm still fat. Oh, yeah. Uh, no question and about it. And getting fatter. Yeah. So until we get into knocking down that 20%, mm -hmm. we are still paying 23% more than we were paying. before. That's right, because yeah. it's based on the previous big, and base. The yeah. inflation is still ticking. You always up. have to be careful with statistics. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because but it's. Figures it's lie in liar's, liar's figure. figure. That's exactly right, because <laughs> um, if you look at stuff, it, 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 we got a situation now that I, I think has got to be looked at. You know, capitalism is based on competition. Yeah. And when you don't cooperate any, or when you don't compete anymore and you cooperate, you get price fixing. And we've got a lot of that, particularly in the food business right now. There are companies out there that are raising prices. Maybe they have a cost increase of 1% or 2%. They're raising their prices 6% or 8% or 10%. Now you'd think, well, if they do that, their competitor is going to eat their lunch. Not today. The idea is, if he can get 10% for his, I'm going to get 10% for mine. That's right. Then the guy over here says, well, hell, if they can get both 50, we'll get 10, I'll raise mine 15. There's no more competition among them. Now, they didn't sit together in a room because they know better, 
and say, well, I'm going to be 15. Let's, let's all go 15, because that, they'd end up in prison. But they, you don't have to do that in a room anymore. Nope. The, the airlines for years and years and years, if you looked at a, a fare from here to Chicago, and you looked, it was I don't know, $210.13. Yep. And you went through every airline that flew out of Logan, every one of them would be $210.13 right to the penny. Yeah. Now, they didn't sit in a room, nope. but one raised it, I raised, I'll meet you. That's right. Pretty soon, they're all, they're all raising it. And it goes the other way. One yeah. cuts, they, they all, all cut. cut. Yep. But today, there's not cutting in that business because yeah, what happened was there are price points that a consumer will accept or expect even more or less than they accept. Now, I'm going to give you a case in a point where what company I worked with was Stanley. They came out with a 25-foot tape rule, one inch wide. It was supposed to be retailing for about $22. They introduced it with these fantastic deals for the distributors, for the wholesalers. They were out selling it for $6.99. They weren't making a hell of a lot on it, but they were selling it for that. So what happened? It went out on the market at six ninety nine. Everybody, Lowe's had it. Uh, well, I don't know if they even had them in those days. But True Value had it, and Ace had it, and all. Mm -hmm. And you saw it in the paper. You saw it on TV. What did consumers say? That tape is six ninety nine. When they tried to raise the price, nobody would touch it. That's right. They ended up having to sell that thing as a lost leader for years yeah. because they set that price in the consumer's mind. Dumb, dumb, yeah, dumb. Yeah, exactly. Black & Decker used to do that with the power tools. Remember around Christmas, a mm -hmm. drill for nine ninety nine. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, then the consumer said, well, that's what they're supposed to cost. Right. Now, today, during the pandemic, we saw meat prices skyrocket. And for a good reason, they couldn't get help. People were dying, and you know, everything was going on. So it leaves, it leaves up now. When people went to the market during pandemic, and they saw a sirloin steak, well, you couldn't even get a sirloin in those days. They, they were all going to, but say a strip steak, even not even, but a strip steak was nine ninety nine, yeah. and it used to be four ninety nine. But then, oh, all right, I'll, I'll buy it, I'll buy it, I'll buy it. You got that price in your head. Now the, the slaughterhouses and the meat processing people saying, I don't have to sell that for anymore. That's right. We can get nine nine nine. dollars They're paying it. Why would I, why would I uh, lower my price? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, when you have a marketplace where you've got Two companies dominating it. Yep. It, well, heavy equipment. Mm -hmm. Who do you think of? Caterpillar, Caterpillar yep. and John Deere. Yep. And then to a lesser degree, all right, you get Kubota coming yep. in. You got Volvo selling into that. Yep, exactly. But Samsung, if you're international. Yeah, yeah. But those are minor mm -hmm. players. Although Kubota has cut into uh, Caterpillar and, and Deer's uh, business a little. Uh, but Caterpillar and Deer set the price. Yes, exactly. The others would be damn fools to bring their stuff in and sell it cheap. Yeah, because they're not going to sell any very, very few the, the items count that they're going to sell is, is so min so Percentage-wise, so little. So small. Yeah. And they're not going to be able to bind themselves into the market because contractors, people that are heavy uh, truck users are going to say, no, I, I, <laughs> I don't want one of those. I'm, I drive Peterbilt trucks. Yeah. Okay? I don't care what you charge. I know that Pete is good for 600,000 miles. That's right. Yep. And in the same thing with uh, John Deere or Caterpillar. I mean, so someone else brings something in from Korea. Mm -hmm. Well, it, uh, look, John Deere says, oh, they're selling it cheap because it is cheap. Our stuff 
has stood the test of time. It's specced into everybody's specifications. Mm -hmm. They buy the stuff. We're not going to compete. We're not going to drop our prices. And uh, so th the prices stay high. That's right. They do stay high. Uh -huh. and until Kubota proves they have got a quality product and they can bring their prices up slightly. Yeah, or, that's or right. If they're wise, they can bring their prices up quite a bit. Yep. Because it's a heck of a lot better to sell a whole bunch of Kubotas at a 20% margin than to sell a few at a 30% margin. Yeah. Well, that, that happened in the power tool business, too. Sure. Oh, yeah. It happens uh, all over business. <coughs> I was at the National Trade Show. I, every year, we had a booth. And uh, the... <coughs> um, yeah. Black and Decker, I can't think of it. Skill. Oh, yeah. Had their booth down there a little bit. And Skill had a... We had yellow jackets with Stanley on them. And they had a red jacket. And a skill guy come over and he says, um, come on, he says, uh, give me one of your jackets. I said, what do you want? And I says, I want to, there's a new company down there called Makita. New power tool, never heard of them before. He said, I don't dare go in there walking in looking like a, like a skill here. <laughs> but he says, you guys don't sell that stuff. So he says, I said, I'll go with you. So here's a jacket. We went down there. And he started, the skill guy started looking around. He's just picking up. And he says, oh, what, what's this going to retail for? Well, what's this going to retail? Walked out and he says, we're in effing trouble. <laughs> he says, that stuff is good and it's going to sell for half of what ours does. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. And it wasn't just Makita. It was two or three more came in at the same time. So it did. It, it just tore the guts out of that business. It damn near put it didn't put them out of business, but damn near did. Wow. Yeah, that's competition for you. Yep. In that case, it brought the price down with everybody. Yeah. That's why today you can see, come Christmas time, you see for one hundred ninety nine ninety nine, six or seven big nice pool power yep. tools, and those are good. I mean, all them, they're all good brands now today. What today there is no junk on that business. I think yeah. because the manufacturing has gotten so good on them. Yeah. Um, Especially the international stuff. Oh, God, yeah. yeah. Um, the Korean stuff that comes to this country. Well, oh, well. The, uh, you take a look at um, uh, the automobiles they mm -hmm. send over here. Oh, my. Uh, I mean, the, they are uh, as good as anything that you find. Mm -hmm. And, of course, the Hyundai brought out the Genesis line, yep. and the Genesis has got features and stuff that the big uh, Cadillacs, the big BMWs Ten uh, Ten. don't have. That's right. And they're selling it for 25000 bucks plus. That, that was Genesis. That was their marketing philosophy. Yep. We will load these cars up with stuff they haven't even seen yet. And we'll make them competitive with a Lexus and a, yeah. and a Acura, but we're going to give them so much more for their money. We're not going to cut. We could cut the price down, but we're going to go on that same level. But we're going to overload them with with bells the, and whistles. The Genesis, the big SUV, the luxury yep. SUV, man alive, is that a vehicle? Yeah, you got to go to school to get one of those because <laughs> there's so much stuff in there. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. not just go out and turn out. No, the no, you got to you got an info center, and you got to touch this and touch that. God Almighty! Ay, ay, ay. Um, Dwayne. Yes, sir. I didn't do okay, it. Okay, I've got a couple of light items to run us up to bright time okay. here. Do you read Dear Abby? Sometimes, if the headline catches my, I catches my interest. I will. Normally, you know, it's, uh, you know, husband's you, in love with a lesbian. Uh, then I'll probably read yeah, it, you know. Yeah. Uh, I, I, the first couple of lines, and if it's something interesting, I'll read it. If not, how many of the letters are for real, and how many of them are written by the staff? 
And by the way, the replies are really very sappy. They're not the, the zingy stuff. No, that well, it used Dear to be. Abby used to be it used famous to be. for. But uh, I, Monica told me too long about that. I, I still call it Ann Landers. I said, "What's it? What's the same with Ann? Ann Landers is dead." Yeah. And, and I said, "Well, hope Abby. Well, she's the one of them. That their their kids are writing it, and, and right. something. I yeah. don't I don't pay attention to it. But um, you're right. They don't have the the zips. And right. sometimes I do read it. I said, "I don't agree with that at all." I know. The, the answers are the same. Go get counseling. Don't yeah, let oh, it yeah. don't let it bother you. Become more active in charities. Well, you and I could write that. Yeah. In fact, in fact it would be fun for. It would be. It would be. That'd be cool to. It would be. And people, write us your letters with your problems. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll, we'll give advise you. We'll advise you. Yeah, drop it in care of NCTV, Norfolk here, and uh, we'll. Uh, <clears throat> Solve all your problems for you. Andy's in there saying, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, there was a note in the paper this morning. Uh, did a staff member at the hospital snoop into the Princess of Wales case, her medical records, and does he know what's really wrong with her? I don't understand the the fascination with the royals and the yeah, minus. Here's the opening line. What is the fascination with the British oh, okay. family? Um, I frequently play dumb. I don't have to play it. I, I, I was going to say I, I don't have. I to said play the it. other day to her, I, my my wife. I says, why is she Prince of Wales? What do you mean, why is she Prince of Wales? I said, England doesn't have whales that I know of. I said, they got horses. Why isn't she Prince of Horses? You're an idiot. <laughs> I Believe me, I get the same reaction yeah. at my house for but, some of my questions, but, uh, too. The, um, the thing with the, uh, like you asked, do you, did the staff make these up? They don't have to. There's enough idiots. They, there's enough yeah. dimwits out there that uh, well, they, they probably get they get thousands of those a day. I was going to say, do you think they get a thousand a week? Oh, God, a yeah. day. I mean, they, they, it's probably uh, real easy to pick out. Oh, they, got to have a, they have a staff that has to sort them out to say, yeah. well, this is a good one, this one's a good one. Yeah. Joe Mazzula, the coach yep. of the Boston Celtics. Right has been doing this thing that when uh, they, uh, the buzzer blows or a timeout or something, the other team has a ball, they shoot it at the Celtics basket, he runs out on the court and blocks it. The league has stopped him from doing it. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what possesses him to do that, and I don't know what possesses the league to have him stop except no. There was some bumping and some yapping going on. That might be. And these guys are not brain surgeons. And they're pretty thin-skinned. They're pretty quick-tempered, some of them. And you don't need to light a fire under them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, said, you watch, well, I watch more football and when it's on than anything, but um, <clears throat> you see a, a, a player get a personal foul penalty that, that is critical to the game. And he just couldn't control himself. That, see, I don't understand how you can be making 15, 20 million dollars a year and have to go out and punch that guy because he looked at you wrong. Disrespect it. Disrespect it. Diss me. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'm missing That's got to drive a coach there. nuts. Yeah. Yeah. Baseball seems to be able to police that. Yeah. It's not a contact sport. That's right, and there's distance between the players. That, that's another. And uh, hockey players have an outlet. They can fight. Yeah. So when things do boil over, hey, you better be prepared. If you start it, you better be prepared <laughs> to right. finish it. Mm -hmm. These guys that don't want to really do that, some of them like to yap and... Uh, 
But uh, my, my son sent, uh, te text me the other day. His two boys play. They both play hockey. My nep my grandsons. And there's Will sitting in a penalty box, and it says, "Guess who's in the penalty box again?" <laughs> <laughs> again. Uh, I think it's time for us to take a break. I think so. And uh, folks, this is a good time for you to um, do whatever you do with intermission, and we'll be back in a couple. Thank you.